Hello, Tim. Good afternoon. <laughs> I, I heard a voice in the back. I'm not sure it's someone's TV or <laughs> Some, has someone got their has someone got their TV on? No, oh, I think that's better. Um, that's better. <laughs> good, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello. 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 How many are we expecting, Satu? Uh, last time we, we had about uh, 35. Oh, great. Yeah. How many people in your club? We do the speakers plus and minus. That makes it louder or softer. Afternoon, everyone. Hello, Marsha. Afternoon. Hello. Afternoon. Not sure okay. how many people we've got here. Hi there. Hi, Tess. Hi. Well, it looks like we've got 16 people on so far. Okay. Which is great. Um, Satu, would you like to be moderator? Moderator? Uh, You're going to have some responsibility in this, I'm afraid. <laughs> 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 What do, have, what, what do I have to do? Well, um, keep everyone in order. Order. <laughs> <laughs> and well, the main thing is um, when people have got questions, because it can be difficult for me to do my painting and look at any whichever one. Yeah, um, in the thing. chat, you can you can place your question in there. <laughs> but be really helpful for me right. if you could make a note of those questions and then read them out and i will try and give my answer at certain stages of the demo if that's okay, okay. yeah or if you're not able to do it if we can select somebody else we could we select to... kate our our chair lady and, uh... that would be so you're so <laughs> Sato, you're just the organizer then, are you of this i'm an organizer yes okay well k would be uh I do. Okay, if you can unmute your microphone, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, hang on. Uh, it's unmuted. Yeah. Have you got two Ks? Oh, is it K yeah. Lamb? Um, yeah, that's me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which K? We've got two Ks. There's a K, K Lamb. Lamb. K Lamb is uh, our. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so in my top right so I can see it. Yeah, I've got my iPad on, but I've also got my computer on, so I get a bigger view, but I get the sound through. <laughs> are you logged on twice, are you? Yeah. Okay, K1 and K2. Yeah. Hi, Robert. Oh. Hello. Hi, Robert. Tim, do you, want, do you want to mute us while you're working? Yes. If, if have you have you done these sort of Zoom things before? Yes, well, yeah, last, last yeah. Month we did. Okay, yeah. So that there should be some protocols. Um, by default, your microphone may be on when you join. Um, also, your your camera may be on as well. So if you want to disable that, entirely up to you. You, know, you, you will still have your name there. The but yes. Um, yeah. If you could mute exists. your microphone, please, unless you want to ask a question in person or if you put your questions into the chat window and then Kay, yeah. is, going read, Kay is going to read them out during the break, Indeed. during our <laughs> intervals. I haven't got a chat window. All right, down the bottom of your screen. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Got it now. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, I think you can place that wherever you want to on your screen. It's a little box. It's okay. Box. It's on the right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, I think you can move it around where you want to. Yeah. Now, how many people have we got logged on? 18. Do you think you're expecting yes. any more, Satu? Oh, you never know. So, might yeah. be a bit late. Yeah. Or they can't, they can't it's three o'clock. Yeah, yeah. 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 might as well start. Uh, are you stippers for time, are you? No. I've got all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I want, to be, I want to be where Miko is. <laughs> where are you, Miko? Is that Hampton Court or somewhere? I should use This is Tuplo Court photo. It's in the Tuplo. Tuplo. Yes, Tuplo Court. You've been there, Tatu and Kate? Yeah. 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 Yes. But that but is closed. Photo. Yes, it's closed now. Yeah, yeah. So that is a photo that you have got behind. This is a photo. No, yeah. I live here. <laughs> um, shall we begin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone again. My name is Tim Wilmot. I'm a watercolour painter. Hopefully you're expecting a watercolour demo this afternoon. Yeah. I don't do acrylics or pastels. Yeah. Purely, purely water. If you can mute your microphones, please. Um, just so we don't have any conflicting noise there. Thanks very much indeed. Yeah, so watercolour painter and um i do i do some workshops online offline through painting holidays and uh i've got a youtube channel as well where you can see the sort of style i do uh if you have seen any of my work so it's watercolor mainly in a loose style and mainly landscapes uh street scenes um, seascapes, harbour scenes, that sort of thing. Now, over the next hour and a half, I'm going to do a complete painting with you, step by step. If you have seen me paint before, I normally paint in about four stages, roughly four stages. So after deciding what to paint, I'll do the initial outline drawing in pencil. Secondly, uh, I then do lay down a wash mainly covering all of the paper except for those areas that i want to preserve white or light and then thirdly i'll go in with the darks to give us a bit more depth and values in the picture in the painting and then last step normally is going in with a small brush adding in little details just pulling everything together um, and then the trick obviously is knowing when to stop um, in that. Oh. So, um, Kay, if I could ask you, how many, how many, are you all watercolour painters? No? Mixture. <laughs> mixture. <laughs> mixture. All right, mixture. Yes, yes I have watercolour. Oh, well done. Some of them are, yeah. We've got to stick together. <laughs> right, so uh, a little while back, when your club made the book and asked Satu, what would you like to paint? Uh, because I normally, when, when I do, when I physically visit an art club for a demo, um, I do try to pick a local scene. So you, I don't know whether Satu was your photos or from, from other people, but I had four submissions and I'd just like to go through those now and describe to you, um, in my opinion, this is just my own opinion and, and what suits my style, what we may like, what I would like to um, paint for you. So let me just share my screen. And can you see that there? Yes. Yeah, good. Yes. So we've got four scenes here. Hopefully you'll recognize them. Uh, this, this must be the center of the village here. And I guess this is maybe winter or spring. Um, there's some um, the trees don't have any leaves on them. So I, I suspect that time of year. 
Uh, but quite a nice scene. Uh, we've got some shadows. Uh, we've got the light light coming from the left. Uh, nice shadows forming. Uh, if I just zoom in a little bit, a lot of light on that building there. A nice shadow coming across the street. Actually, when I zoom in like that, that might be how I've got that. That might be quite a nice composition. But we've got a range of values, lighting from the right direction. We're going to have to fill this space, this road, cars, people, that sort of thing. Maybe these signs on the right hand side, we can use those as well. Um, so that's number one. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, let's go to the next one. Now, this is a little bit different. Um, different from the first one in that we've got very few values here. We've got a light sky, lightish building. So this is a bright day, yet overcast, no shadows. Uh, quite difficult to do and also very complex uh, background with those, those buildings, all those different shops. So that, that would be quite a challenge to do. We'd obviously have to do it um, portrait in orientation. Last one, landscape. There's a nice bit of light hitting the shop blind here. It'd be quite nice to make a feature, that bit of light hitting the ledge. Um, we just draw all these things. So we've got a bit of light there, bit of light there. Uh, but apart from that, well, a bit of light on these bollards here. Um, but apart from that, uh, quite difficult um, to do. So uh, I might skip on that one. Let me just erase those drawings. Now this is this third one, this is quite a nice one. Uh, a street, it's nice that we've got an end to the street, so we're not just going on and on and on and on. There's kind of a full stop at the end of the sentence there. But we've got, again, we've got some nice light hitting the tops of some of the buildings, the rooftops there. Um, these people catching a bit of light against the darker background. A quite attractive pattern of shadows that's giving some kind of contour to the road, a bit of a curve to them. They're quite nice. Um, a bit of reflected light coming into those shadows. So it's the lights coming down, hitting that wall, and then going down into that shadow. That's quite nice. Uh, but be quite, quite a challenge to pull off um, in our painting. Right, and the last one, <laughs> and now for something totally different, is this somebody's house? Maybe it's um, one of your... No, it's the, hall, it's the hall where we paint every Tuesday. Oh, yeah, lovely. Big hall, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> village, village hall. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, um, yeah so <laughs> a winter scene. Um, We've got, we've got some nice light coming across, quite diffused light, winter trees, bits of light hitting. Let me just see if I can pick up some of the highlights. So where's the light coming from? Is it coming from the right, I would guess? So there's a bit of light there, a um, bit of light in the distance, uh, nice light coming across the scene as well. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm not too sure about that one. I'm just trying to think what would be uh, a, a point of interest. We'd have to get in some figures. We did that one, have to put in a figure or two in there to um, give some kind of interest. And then the other tricky thing is that monument, it's way over, it's too far on the right. So you'd have to decide, do you want to put it in the picture? Maybe it could go in here perhaps, um, just to move it a bit. Uh, but nice, nice bollards leading you into 
into the uh, composition into in towards your building there so i've decided i've decided to go with number one if that's all right by you and what i'm going to do i'm going to try and decide so i haven't painted the scene before um paint is similar but not this scene and uh if it's all right by you, I'd like to tackle this one, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's great. All right. So uh, as I go through, I will describe my materials to you. I'll, I'll try and give you as much commentary as possible. Um, let me just close down that, stop sharing. I'm now going to change my camera. Bear with me. There we go. All right. Can you all see my? Yes. Stop. Yes. Thank you very much. Let me just get the lighting a bit better for you. Is that better? I've just adjusted my light above where I am. Is that okay? It looks all right. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Right. So. Paper. I'm using Saunders Waterfoot. Um, watercolor paper, cold press. This So this is medium texture for those of you in the know with, with watercolor paper. And uh, so medium texture secured down with some masking tape. Over to my right on my palette, I've got uh, Windsor & Newton um, paints. I've got neutral tint, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, uh, viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue, Cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, Alison crimson, Windsor red, a bit like a scarlet red, light red, cadmium orange, and lemon yellow. A few mixing wells. My water's my water container is here, and I've got a sponge just to um, use that to take any moisture off my uh, my brush. Brushes I'm going to be using for this. So first of all. The outline drawing, I'm going to be using a two, sorry, a 3B pencil, 3B pencil. And then paint, uh, painting brushes, I will be using a fairly big mop brush, good water retaining ability, good edge to it, good point to it. Uh, that's number one. And then most likely I'll use a, a smaller mop brush uh, that's a natural one this is synthetic but even though it's synthetic it's sort of it's very much like a natural hairbrush but a fraction of cost but it's got quite a good point to it do you see and then for details i will use a small synthetic brush anything will do all right so uh are there any questions uh kay uh have have your friends got any questions before we start or if you want to unmute your microphone um uh, please. i didn't i didn't quite get all the colors but um... uh neutral tint which is a bit like Payne's gray but it is um a dark gray burnt um burnt umber burnt sienna yellow ochre Radiant green, cobalt green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, Alison crimson, Windsor red, light red, cadmium orange, and lemon yellow. There we go. Thank you. Brilliant. All right. Good. Well, um, now sometimes before starting, I might do a little thumbnail sketch just to, not often, but sometimes I do. I'm just going to go straight for this. The thing I need to be careful with. What's that? Venus. Venus. The it's thing I need, need to be careful with is, uh, let me just see if I can. Um, just going to think of a way of um, 
I'll, I'll, I'll keep going back to my picture for reference. So now and again, I'll go back to the reference picture, right? Just, just in case you want to see that. But is everyone familiar with that scene in your village? And there's a very yes. tall chimney. Yes. A very tall chimney on the left, which I don't want the chimney going up above the top of the paper. I want it to be sort of there. So I might start off with just getting that in loosely. I'll make these lines darker in a minute. Um, then we've got the side of the house on the left. All right. There's a little bit of perspective here to deal with, but it's not too difficult. And then the street level is there. There's a bit of brightness there. So as I'm drawing this, I'm trying to think, where are the darker areas? Where are the lighter areas? Where, where are my light values? Where are my darker values? Sometimes I might do a bit of cross hatching just to remind myself of where those, those areas are going to be. Um, right, now the background houses, there's a bit of a quirky angle to them. Let me just see if I can get that right. So starting from the left hand side in the background, there's a left hand building like that, then we rise slightly to the middle one and then the right hand one has got a slight looks like a slightly different angle again do any of you live in these houses here wish i did <laughs> too expensive uh, oh, this expensive part of the village right the right hand side of the right hand building is almost vertical. So we need to think of these angles. Okay. And I like to think of those angle, uh, angles either the hour, the hour handle on the clock or, or degrees off the vertical or horizontal. So that there, for example, is almost 45 degrees. Um, here is about, I don't know, 10 degrees off the horizontal. Um, we've got the church tower behind. And a little bit of a raised bit in the right corner. Um, tall chimney stack there and rooftop goes over another chimney stack there and then The street, there's some covered porches, um, what about there? And then one, well, it's almost in the middle of this house, about there. Little bit of detail at the bottom, there's shrubs and things. I think they're their front, the front of their houses, they're fairly close to the the street. Now the street is curving around. 
from the corner here in front of those background buildings quite a wide pavement this is where we're going to get in again this curve around a, a sense of perspective as well um, extreme left there's a, a yew tree or something there creating a nice border on that left hand side and then an imposing wall here, a few little um, columns. The mishmash of light and shade in there in that in that area. So that's all shade. Let's get this chimney right here. There's lost hang of paper. Someone smells as if they're very being very industrious there. Um, right, just behind this. Tall chimney. It's a lovely chimney. That. Um, there's another chimney. So you can get these. I am drawing now a little bit heavier than I normally would, just so that it comes up on camera. Hopefully you can see all those lines well for the chimney. There. And also we've got the uh, jagged edge of the castle, the, the church tower. Um, shade on the right hand side of the church tower. This is all going to be in the shade. That's in the shade. Right, right hand side, which is a little bit more tricky. Again, we've got some perspective to contend with. We've got a low brick wall that is sort of about there. Um, base there, pavement comes out. And then getting the perspective right, something like that. The top of the wall is almost horizontal, is at eye level. Uh, we come around to here, then we've got a little bit of a gap. And it goes around to right somewhere, a nice shadow in there. Uh, let's pop in. All goes around like that. Let's pop in the street sign, seeing Wickham seven miles, Marlow four and a half, Bourne End, Woodburn. Well, actually, um, I'll just put in one sign. Not bother with the two. Now, obviously, with signs and street furniture, we can move around wherever we want to. Um, but I think actually that they're, they're in quite a good position where they are. Uh, I'll have the top of the sign there. Get the bottom in. Try and find the halfway point for the pointy bit. Okay. Street sign and a post. That's actually going to create a nice, let's have it out a bit further. That's going to create a nice shadow that's going to create some definition to that wall. 
And actually that sign is creating that lovely shadow on that wall. So that's the shadow of that. Right, foliage in the front gardens here, some evergreen shrubs, cut through that sign. Um, and then these buildings on the right hand side. Now they've got a, quite a bit of a, a kink in them as well. Um, so a shallow angle first and then a steeper angle and then a steeper angle still and a white, a bright white chimney with a dark ledge, a few little chimney tops on top. Um, maybe we'll just give a hint to some windows or whatnots in there. But, uh, so that's white foliage, red wall road. Now that road is too bare. We've got to have some figures in there. We've got to have some cars. I'm going to first of all think about the shadows first of all. So light coming from the left. Some nice shadows caused by this structure here. So we'll get those in first. And they, I don't normally draw in the outline of shadows, but the shape of the shadow, but I, I want to get these in first just to so in my own mind, I can get in where I want to put the cars, or a car at least. So shadow, shadow. Let's have a, let's have a car here. Now, the heights of the car, we've got a car in the picture. There's a car parked here. The top of the car is about there. So that's a, that's a guide for us. Try and find a reference point to start the top of a car or the top of someone's head. There's actually one in the shade, I should just notice. There's one here. But I'm not, not going to include that. There's one parked in a little lay-by or um, up on the pavement. But I'm going to get one um, over here. So. Uh, we will have this one about there. There's my car, windscreen, body of the car, shadow. Connect that shadow with Right, that shadow there, connect with a light car, that'll look quite nice, a bit more shadow beyond. Okay, um, windscreen will have light. Windscreens are either made very light or very dark, not that one light. Figure, figure or two. Uh, sorry, the car's going, is it coming on the right side of the road, that's not. Pardon? Cars coming towards you on the right side of the road. <laughs> there's a there's a car. The you want a car coming towards you, do you? No, but this car, if it's facing this way, is on the wrong side of the road for coming. Oh no! If, you, if I put some brake lights in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll have another car. We'll have a car just coming around. Another car coming just around the corner. Okay, two cars and a figure. Um, there's a figure here. Um, maybe it's walking a dog. Okay. 
Okay, it's that kind of figure. And then that figure will give us a nice shadow going up the wall. Okay. Doggy figure. So I drew that figure quite quickly. But again, using the cars as a reference point, the head will be slightly above the heights of the cars. Um, we just rub out. Windscreen. Car. Right. Uh, so I think I've got everything in, but I'm just going to double check. Just double check everything. We've got some strong verticals also. There are a few poles and aerials uh, which I'll not paint in uh, because I don't want to unnecessarily show through the uh, show through in, in the final painting. Um, but what I'm doing now in my mind, I'm just going through making sure I've got all the main elements in, I've got all the main uh, blocks in. I've rectified I've, I've i've satisfied myself of the uh, composition there's a winter tree here so winter tree there winter tree up here okay get rid of that rubber bits of rubber um composition wise I'm trying to avoid anything slap bang in the middle there. Maybe just, in my opinion, just slightly um, to the side uh, of, of that line or that line, okay? The balance of the figure, sign helping the composition. The sign is pointing into the composition, not the other way which I think would be not as good as it pointing in. Uh, let's see, there's the... Uh, the arrow bit, and then we've got... Well, I'll, I'll write in Wickham in a minute when we come to the painting. Road, pavement. Have I got perspective right? Bit of darkness in there where this person's driveway is i guess there's a there's a the curbs a little bit lower there and um yeah i mean that's pretty much it for the drawing stage oh um windows now uh, i might just draw in where the main windows are going to be uh, but I will just do them very lightly there's three windows in that main background building there's some timbers here which again I'll 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 the timbers I'll I'll use a small brush some dry brush marks for that So that's it, me done. Um, any questions at all? Before I start painting. Any questions? Is the, uh, let me just check the, yeah. Any questions at all? Um, okay. I have a question. Um, what size paper are you using? I'll cook it, yeah. It's 15 inches by 11. Right, thank you. So, um, often referred to as quarter imperial. So I, I, I buy these in, in big sheets and I cut them into four pieces. So I'm ending up with quarter imperial and that's 15 by 11. How? And most of the time I, I, I do like painting landscape. Um, sometimes I will paint portrait. That street scene, that second photo, 
that would have been done portrait, but, but this one's landscape orientation. Your pencil looked very good. Is it a wide lead? Is it quite a wide this, lead? This is um, a Faber Castell uh, sort of clutch um, pencil. Oh. Yeah, it's quite thick. It's probably um, what a, maybe a couple of millimeters thick. Well, right. That's, yeah. I, I could I could get by with um, a normal, you know, a thinner. I don't have. I do have a few other mechanical pencils here, but normally, certainly for these demos, I, I think I need to use a thicker one, or, or as thick as I can get away with. And um, yeah, it looks very thick. Line, you're going to see what I'm doing there. So I, I am applying these lines a little bit heavier than I would normally do. Right. All right. Thank you. Yep. Lovely. Thank you. Any more question before I? Go to step number two, the wash, to start painting. All right. Um, Kay, you can't see any questions in chat there. No. No, no more. Okay, thanks very much, Kay. Thank you. All right. So, with the wash, I'm trying to cover all of the paper except except those pure white areas now these houses i could leave the white paper but it might be a little bit too boring i mean the closer you look at those buildings yes they're white but they're they're being contaminated with the colors of things around them um, it's, you know, it's a winter scene as well. Uh, maybe that, yeah, the, the, there's bright sunlight, but it's not ultra bright. So I'm, I might just um, initially just dirty these up a bit. So I'm just dipping my some paint on that from the last painting. Um, I'm using my big mop brush and just pick up anything in the palette and just. dirty up some of these areas it will appear lighter in the finished painting and uh, across the background buildings as well and a little bit on these right hand right hand house I don't want them too too white now next step sky I normally work top to bottom and as I say, trying to cover over everything. Now we do have, this sky is not a big part of the composition, but it's, it's what is it? Maybe a third of it. So sometimes if I, if I have a, a painting with just a, a, a small, thin horizontal slice of cloud, I'll just make it all one color. Um, but here we do have um, a bigger area. So let's let's put in some clouds like that just a, a few random brush marks side of the brush again picking up something in the palette and then the sky itself i'm mixing a bit of cerulean blue Bit of cobalt. Bit of cobalt. 
mix it and then just remove this rogue hair and then now I want a bit of a sharp edge a hard edge down that chimney Sky's done generally very quick for me. We get a little bit lighter as we come down to the uh, buildings. Themselves. Maybe add in a bit more of the darker blue in the top especially on the right hand corner there that's first away from that. Now I don't don't want to overdo it. So I uh, I'll stop when the going's good. While so I dragged the, the wash over the church i want to there to be a soft a soft um edge between the sky and the church tower here so just mixing up some color now for that church There we are. Uh, a little bit of red now. Actually, no, I'm going to go, just want that, that to dry a bit more before I do the rooftops. So I think I'm happy with the buildings. Now I'm going to do the road and, well, basically all of this. Okay. Let's start from the side. Now this is just the base colour here, just my undercoat if you like. And those reddish walls on the left hand side and then the road itself is like a it's got a, a light blue and a bit of burnt sienna in it. it's got a, a coolish brown if I could describe it as that so let's mix up um, a little bit of cobalt and a little bit of burnt sienna, or it could have been burnt umber, something like that. And then a bit of a test. continue up the road around the car 
that's going away from us. <laughs> and then keep mixing, burnt sienna, any blue will do. But I want to get in some, notice my brush marks now. I want to try and get in a bit of texture into the road. Whereas the sky, I've got to be a bit careful with my brush marks. Right, now, pavement. Be like the road, similar colour, isn't it? Doesn't matter if I leave little white bits here and there. Could be the sun just catching something. Um, wall, hmm, too red. Wall over the figure. And then this nearby wall. That wall actually gets a little bit cooler towards the top, but it's nice and warm down there. Um, and then a little bit of greenery in the bottom, which there's some sort of silvery blue shrub growing there. I'll just pick up a bit of cobalt. And just put that there in the corner, merging in with the, the road and the wall. Right. Let's let that dry a little bit. Don't overdo the road. Okay, uh, so I'm just checking everything now. Um, what I'll do now is go in can I re? So there's a question there. Can I refocus on the buildings? Um, you mean these buildings here or there? Has it the, gone? Has my the, camera gone out? Uh, Miss Robert here. The camera seems to have lost the focus. Your drawing was much clearer before. Okay. Um, now that could be down to internet speed, Robert. Um, when yeah. when the internet goes slower the resolution will go down. Um, let me just bring in something that I know is quite sharp. Uh, I'm just going to try and see if I can adjust it a little bit. Very sensitive controls on this. Any better? I don't think it's any different. Okay. There will be a recording for this, and the recording may be sharper for you. Yeah. All right. So this is being recorded, and I'll make it available to the club. Um, it'll take an hour or so to process. Uh, but sorry about that, but it, it may be sharper, a higher definition, because we're streaming at the moment, and there's my internet speed, there's your receiving speed, there's the system itself. If there's a lot of people using it, it can, they can deliberately stream at a lower resolution. So I do apologise for that. 
Right. Let me get in. Smaller brush. I'm now going to do these rooftops. Now, what colour would that be? It's, it's like an orangey red with, because of the weathering, a little bit of lichen or something growing on them. So let's start off with a red, orange, tone it down a bit, burnt sienna, orange, Ooh, too, too bright, <laughs> burnt sienna, a bit of light red again. Yeah, that might be all right. Okay, smaller, smaller mop brush. Okay, sharper point. And I'm going to make sure this is dry here. Should be okay. Um, and then make sure I've got a good point. I don't want too much water on the brush. So I want to be able to control it. Okay. But I want to dull it down a bit. I'll just add in a bit of blue into this mix. That's better. Again, I want a good point. Check my point, check my edge. Okay. And then this one, this middle house is a, the roof comes down a little bit lower than the next one along. Uh, there's a bit of clattering there. Can someone mute their microphone, please? Sounds like someone's moving house. Right. Now they're walking up the garden path. I'm just dirtying up these rooftops a bit. They're too tidy. So, but instantly, hopefully, the buildings now look whiter. Okay, I think um, that's about right on the, on the, uh, the values there. Um, let's do this wish tree. So, Beryl, can you can you mute yourself because we hear the clattering is coming from you. I can see you've got your microphone on. Beryl, Sounds like you're moving house. Can you, can you turn your microphone? Ah. Just mute. Clattering coming from you. That's a mute. Right, I'm just going to uh, create these winter trees now. And just really going to paint around the side of the, or the top of the canopy, side of the uh, mop brush. Not a lot of paint on there. 
and drag down with the surface of the paper we're getting little little speckles forming and a bit denser on the edge of the canopy and need to continue the roof over like that okay so quick check i've got in the main wash i'm now just starting to add in some of the darker values um, particularly with these um, rooftops here. What I'm going to do now is apply the darker colours and I think I'm going to use a hairdryer now, so it's blue, excuse the noise please. I'm just going to use the hairdryer because I want everything to be perfectly dry, okay? So um, just excuse me for about 30 seconds or so when I get out my heavy duty hair dry hair. Okay, um, now are there any questions before I start applying my darker, darker values there? Um, Kate, can you please see if there's any questions, please? Oop, there was. Um, I had a question. Could you just show us the original picture just to, again? Oh, yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, let me just show that to you. There we go. It's about like that. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, maybe if um, when, when I email you the link to the recording, I'll um, I'll, I'll I'll also email the picture to you that uh, Satu sent. Okay. So what That's I'm going to Thanks. What I'm going to do is from the left hand side here, from the left, from the left hand side, I'm going to start applying all these darker values. Uh, chimney, building here. I'm going to go across the street, over that car. Um, I need to do something with the trees, these winter trees here. Uh, something along the base of that building. Other car, shadow, shadow. Shadow here, shadows here, trees um, on the top of the wall, um, and then these darker values, darker value there, get in the figure, and then we'll be done. <laughs> so we'll see how we get on. Hang on a second. There we go. Back to me. Was that all right? Right, thank you. But I'm still going to stick with this um, small mop brush here, or medium, sorry, medium sized mop brush. And I'm going to get in, first of all, uh, this chimney, this tall chimney here. And I think it looks, it's quite a cool shady side to it. So I'm using a bit of cobalt here. 
not too much water and I need to be fairly careful with the painting of this because it's a nice looking chimney maybe a little bit darker as we come down to the base and then up to the um, the roof and hopefully that's the right sort of uh, value there uh, let me just get in the road sign which I'm using a weak yellow ochre for. Again, it's not strictly speaking white. It might be just a little bit too bright. Sorry, a bit too dark. Let me just um, try and lift some of that off. There we are. That'll do. Uh, now, foliage shadows going across the street. I'm going to try and work my way now left to right. That's the general idea. So these, the, the foliage here, it's like a sort of, to me it looks like some sort of conifer or yew tree. Uh, mix of a bit of viridian green. Burnt amber, a little bit of neutral tint, not much water. And with brush marks to try and emulate. emulate that sort of foliage that we've got. So we're down to the wall and I'm going to mix uh, a bit of Amazon Crimson and a bit of neutral tint. Amazon Crimson neutral tint. Ultramarine blue and maybe a little bit of neutral tint. As we come down, it's going to get a bit cooler, so more ultramarine blue. A little bit darker as well. Now, cooler. Shadows over the pavement
into the road and try and observe the middle step of the of the gutter. Um, possibly the gutter like that. Okay. No building here. Not so dark. Really like a light bluish grey. So a bit more water here, a bit of cobalt. Keep mixing. And make sure I've got a good point, a good edge. Over the side of this wall, I'm not sure what the object is. Try and get a good edge to it and down the front of the building. to the street there's a bollard here I'll try and carefully navigate around that some sort of winter tree in the distance, right, over to the side of this car. So we're now giving that a little bit of form. The neutral tint of the base of the building. No shadows going across. The pavement and hitting that car. Actually, just a little bit further in like that. Um, This car that's the car shadow for the car. Trying to think of the angle of the sun. Trying to keep that correct. There we are. Let's put in the put in the um, right hand side of the church tower now. Down to the top of the rooftops. 
like that. These, the roofs on the right hand side need to be a bit darker. Like that, possibly. bit darker on that side as well. So this car Coming around the corner, get a bit of shadow on that. Uh, the the shadows underneath these right hand roofs. One, two, three, a bit of shadow coming down the wall. Excuse me a second, I've got Ultramarine Blue. I've got about a quiz worth of Ultramarine Blue on the palm of my hand at the moment. Where was I? These shadows. Okay, just just the impression of a few little windows there, and be careful not to dip the palm of my hand in yet more paint. There we are. Um, Shimmy top there. Uh, bit of shadow behind this chimney. And this one. Right, uh, so we're into the foliage in here. So let's, actually I might just use a different brush for this. Right, a smaller brush. This is an old um, ox hair brush that's quite good for foliage. It keeps losing hairs, but it's, it just gives you a nice, when it's, when I've got paint on it, it just gives you a nice texture. It's it's not you couldn't do any detail work with it, but when you when you've um, got some paint on it when it's wet, you pick up some 
pick up some uh, foliage. We're going to do this area here. We need to block that in. So, around that sign. Bit of negative painting around the post and then a bit of foliage over there, get a little bit greener. And shadow behind the side of the wall, the gap in the wall. No. The bit of trees or something growing, so a bit of um, shrubs growing on the top of the wall. Perhaps a little bit of shadow there. Um, shadow four. Shadow for the sign. Allergen crimson, bit of red. I use the same brush. And then the Post shadow, something like that. Uh, figure. Now let's do, yeah, let's do the figure first. So same brush. Head. And then the dog. Like that and some shadows. So try to get think of the angle of the sun. Like that. Um Right, we're down to more detail work now with my smaller brush. Um, are there any questions so far at all? Okay, no. Tess was nodding her head. <laughs> okay. Right, small brush. Oh, that one. 
small brush now. Put that one away. Small brush for some detail. I might have to go back to some of those um, detail brushes, but uh, so the, the mop brushes. But let me just now. So not much water at this stage. And we're just going to pick up some architectural details. Uh, Bit more details on the shadows. Um, for example, there should be a shadow there, shadow there. Um, we've got a bit of darkness on the top there. Um, more winter winter shrubs um, house here Few little windows, not every window, porch, car, all right, brake lights. And then these porches on the background houses. A bit of a timber work. So I'm just using the tip of the brush very lightly here and almost dry brush marks, not much water at all. So a few dry brush marks, tie marks, something like that. Uh, there's a few more details in this wall. Now I need to be a bit careful with the the uh, sign here. This could ruin it if I misspell Wickham. Let's get in the arrow, let's do the easy bit first. This is where it comes in handy if you're a sign writer. Sometimes with lettering, I'll do it so that you Excuse actually make me. Well, why don't you, why don't you um, do Marlowe instead of High Wycombe? It would be easier. Okay, you think I can't spell Wickham? No, no, it's just a lot of <laughs> a lot of wording, a lot of letters. All right, Marlowe it is, and I'll put Marlowe and um, 
Yeah, so I've got a big, I've got space for two towns here. What other, what other town can I put in? Um, well, Bourne End is just round the corner. Okay. Or Maidenhead. Maidenhead. It's longer than Wickham. I know. <laughs> I'll, sorry, I do put a, I'm going to stick with Wickham. Okay. <laughs> but it was a very good idea. Thank you. Um, I might have to eat my words now. Um, so, <laughs> I need a very good point on this. And I need to make sure, because my finger's going to rest here, I need to make sure that's quite dry. Um, so, Wickham. W. Y. C. Doesn't matter if I do. Every single gum. B E A four and I four. See, so I'm just really mar low, just really. Give the impression of some of these letters A4155. Five, five. I remember these now. Um, post. Post. Um, let's get in a bit more of that post there. Pavement There we go Bit more detail to we need to done actually a bit more detail to shrubs and whatnots in those front gardens. This dog needs to be on a lead. That looks like a doggy bag actually. We are a bit of a lead. Uh, right. So I think oh, aerials, aerials, and some other poles and posts and things. Um, chirp. Some aerials. That church needs a line there. Makes it look more like a church tower. Oh, we need some little thin, little thin wispy lines for the tree. Hang on, hang on. Where's my little brush? Where's my little rigger brush? Hang on a second. Here we go. Right, thin rigger brush. Any paint that's in the palette, not too dark, but we'll just render in some of the tree trunks here. Just a few. Makes it look more like a tree now. Uh, 
Um, Or get us some yellow lines, right? Dry brush marks. And one, two, two. Are there any oh, there's some on the other side as well? You can't see them on the other side as much. There are that helps to sort of lead the eye into into the composition. Um, this roof now roof tiles I very rarely will do, but there just needs to be some sort of yeah, that's better, and then. Few more lines on the rooftops and chimneys. And what I might do finally, just maybe rub out some of the lines on the cars just to make them a bit brighter, particularly on the left hand side. Just that there. There we go. Darkness. Yes, so there we go. Um, cook them in the winter. That's better. Need to see darkness in there. Right. So, uh, any final questions? I'll make this recording available for you. Um, but uh, are, th are there any final questions at all? No, just brilliant. Okay. No. Was was that to everyone's liking? That that Excellent. demo. It's Loved really it. good. Very good. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. Loved it. Yeah, we got the car right in the end, going in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> Now you see when a new car. Yeah, yeah. Like I could, I could have um, used a little bit of white paint, which I sometimes do. Yeah. At the tube, uh, just to pick up on a few. I sometimes, would, sometimes wouldn't do it on a winter scene, but um, on a a bright day, sometimes it just picks out little details. You've got to be careful with white paint in watercolour. Some people don't like it. Some people overdo it. Um, I'm probably the latter. <laughs> but just little things, watch that burn pen, but just little things like maybe the side of that post, the catching bit of the light. Um, just the side of this face there, bit of the dog, bit of the lead. There, just a tiny bit. Uh, the car. Headlight. And that's it. When I'm when I'm now quizzing myself, can I use, can I use any more white? That's when I'll put it away. Well, thank you very much, Tim. That was very no, informative. My pleasure. Um, Lovely. I, 
I don't do um, landscapes and loose work. Mine is very tight and normally yeah. um, of flowers and things. But it's lovely to see how quickly you can produce something that looks fantastic. My work takes me months. <laughs> well, the, well, the trick is trying to simplify, yeah. having a time limit, uh, painting in a loose style, and and not well the opposite of simplify or same as same as simplify not getting into complicated now. You know, you you could some people could have spent an awful lot of time with those buildings yeah. Yeah. but they're in the background we if we if we put more detail on those it's going to bring them forwards which we, yeah. we, want, to, we want to push them back um yeah. thinking about composition the balance as well of everything all right but tim the accuracy of your drawing is important isn't it yeah the drawing is well first of all it's choosing the right scene uh, i went through those photos and yes. it, just in my opinion, for, for my style or for watercolour, two of them would have been quite tricky and challenging to do. They were great photos, yes. but maybe difficult to justify getting getting a, a picture right. So um, hopefully that came out in my demo as well. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Thank you very much. I'll do a, I'll do a, I'll make a photograph of this. Um, yes, please. Got, Made a smudge in it. We make. I've, I've got the recording. Wait till my system. It, it's got to process the recording. Right. We've got the technology. Brilliant. <laughs> Can't wait. All right. I'll let you all get on. Have a nice evening, everyone. Lovely. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. And Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Thank you.